We come now to six Bible books that kind of cover the same territory. They overlap. Um, First and Second Samuel probably were written separately because they were too big to contain on one scroll. So they had to go on to two scrolls, and so you had First and Second Samuel. Same thing with Kings, you have First and Second Kings. And the same thing with Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles. Um, Chronicles was obviously written much later because it includes things that took place a long time after the events recorded in Samuel, but they still cover much of the same material um, and uh, pretty much the same era, uh, with Samuel and Kings being earlier than Chronicles. Uh, essentially, these are like histories, but they're not histories in the sense in which we're used to histories. They don't attempt to tell everything. Uh, they don't attempt to put dates on it. They are quite literally stories about Israel's history and God's dealing with Israel and the things that happened to Israel when they were faithful and things that happened to Israel when they were unfaithful. And these reports are written for our admonition and instruction. So let's take a look at the storyline. The story begins with Samuel, who in many ways is the greatest of all the judges. Uh, he is a transitional figure that marks the end of the period of Judges and the beginning of the period of the Kings. Um, he f is the longest serving of all the Judges. He starts out serving when he's quite a young boy and uh, he winds up um, serving uh, long into his old age. Um, he is a priest in the temple, the sanctuary, um, what is actually um, the tent where God met his people, where the, it was the center of Israel's worship. Uh, there had not been a permanent building built yet uh, for all the many years of the Exodus wanderings, the 40 years there, plus all the years in the, in the land since the crossing of the Jordan and the con beginnings of the conquest. Um, the religion of Judaism had been centered in a tent and uh, Samuel served there. He was uh, uh, a prophet who um, spoke for God. He was also a priest who ministered to the people. He was also a judge who made judgments about secular matters as well as religious matters. And um, Samuel was uh, a righteous man. Nobody ever accused Samuel of doing the wrong thing uh, or being a bad person. Uh, unfortunately, his sons were not so benevolent, and uh, when Samuel was old and it uh, looked like his death was imminent and his sons were next in line to be judges over Israel, the people came to Samuel and said, uh, your sons are not the same quality that you are, and uh, we don't really want them to rule over us, to be judges over us. Um, what we would really like is a king. And Samuel tried to caution them and say, you know, kings are expensive. And, uh, you know, they live in big palaces and they have stables of horses and standing armies. And, you know, I think you're going to find that you don't really want a king. You can't really afford a king. And, uh, and a king is going to be a real pain. But the people were insistent they wanted a king. And so with God's guidance, Samuel anointed uh, a man, a young man named Saul, not to be confused with Saul, who was Paul in the New Testament. King Saul was the first of the Jewish kings, and uh, his time period would be around 1100 or so BC. And uh, he uh, was anointed king, and uh, sure enough, just as Samuel had said, uh, you know, he had to have a palace, and he had to have stables, and he had to have chariots, and he had to have an army, and you know, and the taxes went up and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I think most of the people sort of felt that he wasn't worth it. Um, and things started out very well, but Saul was not very good at being faithful to God. Uh, it was like he just didn't have a heart for God. Um, you know, he was more interested in himself. He was more interested in his position and his power. He didn't really have a deep love for God. He didn't seem to have a deep love for the people. He seemed to be mostly about Saul. And so it was not entirely a happy experience, and um, eventually uh, the people lost their respect for him. God rejected him and appointed David as the new king, even before Saul was dead. So for a long time, everybody knew that David had been appointed king, uh, 
but Saul was still alive, and Saul had a son named Jonathan, who should have been the next king. It was quite a mess, but eventually Saul and Jonathan were killed in battle with the Philistines, and David became sole king. Uh, David was a great king, and uh, he was wise, he was humble, he was just, he was, he was much loved. Uh, unfortunately, he also made some big mistakes. He made some big mistakes with his kids by being far too lenient with, with them and playing favorites among them. He made some mistakes with his wives, uh, including the famous story of taking another man's wife as his own, and then in order to legitimize it, um, sending that man to the front lines to be killed in war so that he could have his wife. Uh, that was not good, and uh, Israel suffered for it, and David and his family suffered for it. Uh, but all in all, David was a great king, powerful and very successful. His son Solomon was uh, equally powerful and uh, just as successful, but not quite as beloved by the people and not quite as in touch with the people. Uh, he was more king in the grand style with thousands of horses and multiple wives and a huge harem and a big palace and you know all that sort of stuff. And while the people were proud of Solomon, um, it was hard carrying the responsibility for this whole monarchy on their backs. And uh, so when Solomon died and his son became king, they asked for some relief and uh, hoped that his son would give them some cut in taxes and you know less responsibility for military service and all that kind of stuff but uh, but his son refused and as a result uh, the people revolted and there was a civil war and uh, the united monarchy uh, under Saul David and Solomon uh, as a result of the civil war became the divided monarchy with uh, a kingdom in the north of Israel and a kingdom in the south of Israel the northern kingdom was called Israel, the southern kingdom was called Judah. And the northern kingdom consisted of 10 of the 12 tribes. The southern cons kingdom consisted of two of the 12 tribes, but they were large tribes, and so the populations were kind of equal. And uh, this state of affairs with the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom was nowhere near satisfactory. There was conflict between them. They were both weak. As a result, when the Assyrians invaded, the northern kingdom fell completely and was utterly annihilated. And uh, nobody ever heard of those 10 northern tribes again. They are gone, obliterated from the face of history. The southern kingdom held out against the Assyrian invasion and managed to stay independent but it was not an easy fight.